I'll be at my house with my little brother's on the computer and he'll be sending stuff back and forth to people that he meets and you see some pretty crazy stuff on there. I think the problem with the internet and what makes, um, what makes it more of a concern around issues like pedophilia is that these people form their own virtual communities online. So it's hard for pedophiles to find each other right now. But on the internet, there are places that they can go and there are groups that they belong to on the internet where they can trade information, they can trade pictures, they can trade tips. And they also form a virtual community, which means that they insulate themselves further from larger societal values. So they can say, you know what, this is good. Those guys are all picking on us. This isn't a problem. Back in Greece, they did this all the time. And that insulates them and protects them. It makes them more um, difficult to treat, more difficult to break through the denial, and for them to see it's a problem because they have this community that's supporting their views. And on the computer, you can get a lot of shit. Pictures of 14-year-olds. Yeah, oh, definitely even younger. You know, people ask, why is the internet so powerful around sexuality? And we think that it's something that we call the AAA engine, which has to do with access. It's there 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, whenever you have an itch. Affordability, you know, the internet is such a vast thing that it, there's supply and demand. You can get all kinds of sexual pictures and all kinds of stuff for free. And the third A is anonymity. So people engage in all kinds of things that they wouldn't do anywhere else. They wouldn't do these behaviors, they wouldn't engage in these behaviors anywhere else. And when you engage it in it enough times, there's a concern about whether it desensitizes you to it and whether you're more likely to then take it offline and engage in it offline. What's on the internet? What's available? Uh... Just everything, dude, from child pornography to, to straight up whips, flamethrowers, bestiality. It's out there. It's out there. Have you seen child pornography? Yeah, you can say that. You know, again, kids are on the internet and they go everywhere. And whatever software protection you have on your computer, they defeat it. They're, they're the experts on um, internet and software. So whatever you, whatever you try to do, they defeat. And they go everywhere and they see bestiality, they see rape, they see sexual violence. And again, I think it can confuse them. Oh my gosh, look at those girls. And I think it can hurt their attitudes about sexuality. What are the consequences of exposure to hardcore pornography at an early age? We can't answer that question. As a society, we have no idea how this is going to affect our children in the future. <gasps> Since pornography was first mass merchandise in the 1960s, the effects on adult males have been studied and documented by social scientists, doctors, psychologists, and law enforcement officials. They cite the following as the most common effects. Addiction. I'm addicted to pornography. If you tried to, have you ever tried to quit looking? I have, no, it's all I, I mean, I gotta see porn. Sex miseducation. Have you learned things about women by looking at porno? Yeah, they're down for anything, no matter what they say. No matter what they say, a girl is down to do it. Desensitization. I get less attached to her emotionally and more just down for physical sex. Conditioning. It's gotten me into different positions. It's gotten me into little role playing. Before I saw porn, I was just straight, just regular stuff. And then you get into some crazy stuff. And acting out. You ever gotten violent with it? Yeah. <laughs> What were you doing? Uh, like she would pretend like she's getting raped and I'd pretend like I'm raping her. That's, that's from porn. When we hear the word addiction, we usually associate it with a substance like alcohol or drugs. Yet pornography, even though not an ingestible substance like cocaine, seems to be used by many people in a compulsive drug-like way. In fact, many pornography addicts exhibit the same symptoms as drug addicts, such as tolerance, the need to have a harder and harder dose, dependence, becoming dependent on your drug of choice, and withdrawal, the feeling of physical pain when you are without the drug. All of these painful symptoms seem to promote out-of-control behavior as the addict tries to manage his addiction. But how can pornography, something that is not ingested in the body like a drug, be addictive? How can certain activities that do not involve a drug, like skydiving, eating, or sex, cause such a higher mood alteration? What we realized in the early 70s, when endorphins were just being discovered, was that the capability to get high lies naturally within all our brains. We now understand that non-drug-related activities or experiences can stimulate similar chemical reactions inside the brain that mimic the action of drugs. The key to understanding how all highs occur is understanding how natural chemicals in our brain work. These natural chemicals are called neurotransmitters, 
One of the more well-known neurotransmitters are endorphins. Neurotransmitters are produced inside the many billions of brain cells, stimulated by electrical impulses from the nucleus of their home cell. Neurotransmitters are released into the synapse. It is these natural chemicals that are responsible for all highs and mood alterations. Even when drugs are taken, it is still these natural chemicals that are responsible for the high. Drugs only create a situation for these neurochemicals to overstimulate. Activities or events can also stimulate the release of these neurochemicals. The excitement and danger of risk-taking cause the natural release of the neurotransmitter dopamine into the synapse, creating the same high as cocaine. The phrase adrenaline junkie is actually quite appropriate. The pain and stress involved in bodybuilding causes the natural release of neurotransmitters called endorphins, creating a sense of euphoria, and relaxation similar to the effects of morphine or heroin. The pornography experience also triggers the release of powerful mood-altering neurotransmitters. The elements of addiction that we've worked with over the past 20 years that compel people to repeatedly engage in compulsive pleasure-seeking activities are arousal, relaxation, and fantasy. Now, of all the tools for addiction, drugs, gambling, skydiving, and television, Sex addiction seems to combine these elements with more frequency and more intensity than any of the other activities. While looking at pornographic imagery, excitatory neurotransmitters are released into the synapse, causing the body to become extremely energized, just like the high of cocaine. It gave me a, like a, an adrenaline rush, like I was doing speed or something. It feels like this incredible charge of life flowing through my veins. It was like getting a rush in the arm of adrenaline. At the height of this energized state, orgasm occurs, causing the release of endorphins, which create relaxation and euphoria.